Perseids meteor shower, one of the most spectacular astronomical events of the year. Around the peak and in the best sky conditions possible, there should be about 80 shooting stars visible per hour. This year though, the conditions are not favorable at all. A bright moon is expected to bring these numbers down to about 10 to 15 per hour max. I almost decided not to give it a go at all. But then the skies were forecasted to get clear with temperatures around 20 degrees Celsius all night and the possibility of good company. This is our story. Well, good evening and welcome back finally to the channel. It is now uh, mid-August and that means we are trying to photograph the Perseids meteor shower of 2025. Um, yeah, it's uh, becoming clearer and clearer, so we are in luck. There's actually one thing which we are not so lucky about and that's uh, not only us. You can see it here behind me. We will have an almost full moon the whole night. I almost decided not to come out to uh, try and shoot the, the, the Perseids, but in the end I thought, well, let's just give it a shot and see what we get. Let's go. So let's look at the situation of tonight. It is August 12th. Uh, you can see the moon, uh, the moon, the sun will be setting around 9 o'clock and our estimated time of arrival at location is around 10 o'clock where twilight has set in. And you can also see that pretty soon a moon will start to rise next to Saturn here in the east. The moon will be at an 85% uh, phase, so that's almost a full moon. And our expected uh, time to start shooting is around 11 o'clock. And by then you can see that the moonlight will wash out yeah, pretty much uh, yeah, all but the brightest meteors already. So we don't expect to see a lot, but if we capture something, it should be the large fireballs, if there are any. Um, we expect to uh, yeah, go on with shooting to about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that also depends a bit on how successful our night has been and uh, how relaxed we feel. Um, yeah, but by then the moon will be very very high in the sky and uh, will be shining its light. Uh, my idea specifically uh, to dodge at least some moonlight is uh, to shoot at the opposite side. So I should be looking somewhere to the northwest. And I noticed that the constellation of Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, is there. So I thought that constellation would make a pretty strong uh, sky composition. So um, yeah, let's see how we do back in the field and uh, start shooting. Okay, so uh, we are all uh, shooting now. As you've seen, I'm also with Corné and with Martijn. Corné and Martijn are shooting uh, to the core side, I think. I'm shooting uh, a composition or at least a sky shot with uh, the constellation of Ur Ursa Major in the northwest. Um, what the plan is, uh, I um, yeah, just will let the tracker run for one, two or three hours. Just uh, we'll see how long the, it will take uh, to catch a very large fireball. <laughs> Or at least some meteors, let's see. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I'll let it run a couple of uh, hours. Uh, I am shooting at 13 seconds, ISO 800 I think, F1.8 and yeah, my histogram looks almost in the middle. That's uh, of course because of the moonlight. Um, yeah, and after that I'll just look for a composition. Maybe I'll be super lazy and just shoot myself sitting here on a chair. And in the meantime I'll let some uh, video cameras run and hope uh, we can film some seats also and uh, yeah. the most important thing is uh, just to enjoy our night I think here because uh, it's uh, beautifully warm it's uh, over 20 degrees Celsius summer nights of Astro are pretty good although I don't hate winter either but uh, you can see my uh, sweat pearls already I think but hey anyway let's enjoy our night <laughs> Now uh, past midnight, just a couple of minutes after uh, 12 o'clock. Um, yeah, we've been here for about one and a half hours, I think. Uh, I have seen 
one meteor, <laughs> but I think this guy saw some uh, some more. How many did you spot yeah, already? Yeah, I think four or five, and one big one when we were building up the stuff. That one was really big. But you didn't catch it on camera, no, no. always. But it was <laughs> Classic. Uh, really a fireball. It broke down in pieces, so it was really cool to nice. see. Nice. You also have something in, uh, on your camera, which is uh, worth it already? Yeah, or? only one, yeah, one yeah. I guess. Okay, yeah. cool, yeah. cool. It's maybe more than me, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm uh, shooting the other way and I'm looking to the uh, Great Rift side of the Milky Way, so for me it's a big surprise. <laughs> and uh, you were out uh, already yesterday also? Yesterday with my son indeed, and then nice. I saw in two hours maybe ten. Okay. Um, from my hometown, Bortel 9. <laughs> Moonlight. And, uh, Doesn't matter with the moon. Here mm -hmm. it's also Bortel 9, I think. Yeah. Maybe we should measure it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was great. It was a great experience for him and for me as well. And now Was it's it just, his first uh, meteor shower? Yes. Nice. Yeah. So he saw a few as well, so he was very uh, enthusiastic, or how you say that in English, but uh, enthusiastic, he was, uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. it was nice. And now uh, just chilling here. Yep. All right. Let's keep on chilling. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it finally happened. It's about uh, half past 12 and I saw my first Perseid of the year, finally. Uh, I had my red light there on, uh, on the camera, but as you can see, it's not even necessary because the moon is so bright now. Uh, yeah, anyway, we uh, are seeing less and less of the sky, uh, so it's, it becomes more and more difficult to uh, spot meteors. But uh, we will keep on, I think, for about one or one and a half hours or something and uh, perhaps we'll see a fireball. That's always the hope, the fireballs. <laughs> As you can see, uh, Ursa Major is now almost in its horizontal position. This uh, was more or less uh, the composition I wanted uh, to shoot it. What I'm going to do uh, is I'll just grab, I think, 5, 10 or 15 of the sky shots, which uh, my camera is shooting now to uh, stack and reduce the noise. There will be no need for stretching whatsoever because there's no dust. And even if there was dust or Milky Way or something there, the moon will wash that out. Uh, I will try to uh, get the stars of the constellation uh, some more pop. Uh, I'll do that in post-processing. Maybe I'll uh, do it with um, uh, my mist filter, but I get really lots of reflections all the time. So I think I'll do it in uh, post-processing. Now we are talking, I think it's about one o'clock or something and finally the meteors are catching up. Uh, we saw three or four mega bright fireballs, two also in my frame for Ursa Major. And it was one, uh, yeah, the whole header fields uh, kind of blew up. Corne, you, oh, there you are. Yes, yes. You Hello. added the frame? Yeah, I got it 14 millimeter full uh, through the Great Rift and it was almost my whole frame was filled with the meteor so that's sick. cool yeah super sick super <laughs> sick um, I also, uh, yeah, I actually missed it. Uh, I uh, did see the smoke trail, but we'll uh, throw it up on the on the screen, and uh, hopefully uh, Corne can blend it, and uh, we will leave Martijn alone for a minute because he missed it because he was accidentally filming. So he's we'll take one minute of silence. He's a bit cranky, and I can uh, <laughs> can actually understand that. All right, let's go further. So 
I'll just have one more time. Finally got a meteor. <laughs> So I'm uh, quite happy again. <laughs> it was a huge one. <laughs> yeah, it was quite big, so that's fine. Nice, everybody happy again. Yeah. <laughs> Despite the near full moon conditions, we were really glad we went out and enjoyed the show anyway. I shot my foreground on the way back to the car at a replica of an old burial mount. The poles provided a nice leading line into Ursa Major and some depth in the landscape. I hope you enjoyed the video. For now, thank you again for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.